Hey, thanks so much for joining everyone. I've got a really exciting update, update number 50 to the VR mocap project. I never thought I'd get to update 50, um, let alone update five, but here we are. Uh, it's been two months since I made the last video, so I wanted to catch you up on some features that were in the prior version. Uh, probably the biggest being this kind of test scene, and this is kind of a way for you to tell uh, if you are, you know, got the hardware working, if you've got the inputs working, um, and that's just in the root of the VR mocap folder. Um, one thing I've noticed though is uh, if I press play, oh, actually I already fixed it, but I think in the submitted project I didn't actually change the actor to be the same um, player index as the uh, player pawn I put in the scene. Basically I have the player pawn, the spectator camera, this is set to auto possess, you know, all of the stuff that you typically have to do to get up and running um, with an actor. So I'll just, uh, if you're not familiar with the project, I'll kind of run through it here. Um, essentially, you want to line yourself up with the actor. I'm just going to do this quickly because it's not that important that I'm that accurate. But uh, there you go. So uh, here I am embodying this uh, mannequin. Um, so that's kind of nice. And I've got like, you know, a friendly little tip like, hey, this is set to auto-possess. Hopefully it'll get um, some people up and running faster. So another thing I've done in preparation to have more multiplayer shoots, uh, local multiplayer that is, I don't know how to replicate stuff. I'm not that smart. But uh, what I've done is I've actually uh, color coded the goals. So like you can see the trackers will actually change color um, based on what player pawn they are. So this is player pawn one. Um, normally what you uh, spawn into and what I recommend is just setting this to zero. Um, and you can see that the trackers are um, of course more of the uh, pink color that's in this uh, inner ring. So that's kind of a nice little uh, quality of life feature. I noticed that like when I had multiple actors with all these trackers, which gets a lot of interference, so it's not a perfect solution, but um, when there's two actors and there's all these trackers and they're all the same color, very hard to discern which tracker belongs to who. So, um, oh, and speaking of that, actually, I've got a new update over here, this center actor on locator. So what this does, actually, I can uh, demonstrate it. Let me. Um, Jump back out here and make sure that this pawn is set up. So let's see, yeah, player zero. So normally what happens in my system, you can see this uh, inner ring, this snaps to where the actor is. And what happens to the player pawn itself, you can see that its center, like the world center, basically my VR center, is now this point down here. But sometimes when you're working with multiple people, uh, you don't wanna have that. Um, so this little locator here, which I can move out to the side, you might want to have this like in between two actors. And if I press play, actually, let's leave it visible. Sorry, <laughs> jumping all over the place. But um, so if I have this locator selected, you can have it be visible um, when you enter game mode. So what the, that functionality will do is you can press this button and it'll center the actor like the world VR play space on this guy. So no matter how many actors there are, like you can go through and say, you know, player one, and you can recenter them if you have more than one player pawn. Uh, what that'll do is that'll make sure that every single player pawn has exactly the same zero, zero, zero right here. So you can shake hands and it basically aligns um, all the player pawns because normally what happens is the player pawn zips to the actor that they're kind of uh, gonna be possessing. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, and as you'll notice, there's like a few new other options in here. I'll kind of explain those. Uh, well, let's do it now. So the biggest part of this update is the physical animations and ragdolling. And if I knew it was this easy to implement, I would have done this like several versions ago. It's incredibly easy to add this to your, to your game uh, or whatever. So basically we have Lars here. This is a kind of survival horror VTuber I've been working on. Uh, you can see me stream as him on uh, Twitch, um, Mega State Man Play on Twitch. But uh, what was cool about the movement actor is you can kind of like control them like a video game character using the joysticks. So you can see uh, I'm not really having any kind of interaction with anything. But if you hold down the B button on the left hand, you see how it kind of like popped a little bit? Now there's actual physical animations on the character. So if I walk into this wall, you can see how like the hand is like kind of, yeah, it won't go through the wall. And uh, the better your physics asset that you set up on your character, the better this is going to look. Um, so it's really, really cool because you can have like tons of interactions with like your environment. Like uh, it's, it's sweet. <laughs> and if you hold down the B button on the other hand, 
<laughs> well, that happens. Uh, and if you hold it down again, then, um, then you spawn back. So I made it a hold because I didn't want it to be accidentally pressed, like when you're fumbling around, like, what's this button do? What's this? Um, you have to like really mean it. It's like takes around a second or two to actually uh, implement. So uh, yeah, um, lots of fun to be had there. Um, this is the kinds of things I want to do more of, like just more of the cool gameplay kind of features. I want to add a lot more of that kind of stuff to the VR mocap project. Um, so you can see actually if I open up over here, you can trigger these also um, over here. It looks like ragdoll is broken. Uh, you might have to, like, it might have gotten to a state where it couldn't ragdoll, but um, if you keep like toggling on and off physical animations, I think that'll it'll eventually work. So what this does, this is like the stiffness of the animation. So like you can have um, kind of higher fidelity animations at the cost of the physics. Um, play around with that slider. Um, unfortunately, there's no way to control that while you're just using the, these, but um, yeah, you can always just roll, walk over to the computer and just use this to turn on physical animations instead of the controller. So I also changed how the no trackers and how the elbows work in the system. So let me just jump into the scene here. So if I look at the player pawn, um, if you unfold this live link trackers here, these are the uh, live link names for each device. Um, so if you actually delete them, that should um, make a fake tracker for that position uh, for the elbows, the chest, and the feet. Not sure if it's all working, like the feet, it's been a while since I've looked at those. Um, but this should work, uh, and basically it'll fake in um, a tracker. Of course, the motion's not going to be as good as if you do that, but um, that's the best way. Before I was using invalid live link frame, and I think something's broken with that, so... Um, I say moving forward, just if you're not using a tracker, just delete it out of that field. Um, but I can show you how the elbows work now. So uh, I bet it an elbow offset and uh, before basically it was just sticking to where the bone was and that, that added uh, some really bad elbow motion, but this should give you better kind of, um, yeah, elbows in general. They shouldn't like flip and do any crazy weird stuff. Um, because before, yeah, the, um, the bone was like, it was like right on the bone, so it wasn't enough room for the pole. Like it was kind of flipping back and forth because it was, uh, you know, the pole was flipping basically. So that should that should work better now. So you probably notice that there's also some emotion sliders at the bottom of the VR mocap editor widget. So let's actually enter play mode and uh, I'm just going to load into the actor here. Whoops. There we go. Um, so yeah, if you don't know, you can hold down the A button and like get different kind of camera modes. So like this is um, kind of my selfie stick mode. So anyways, I'm just gonna get this close to my face. And um, I know that the iPhone has trouble hitting some expressions like sad. So you can just basically use these sliders to add like a little bit more emotion in case you, um, or you can have like say in the VTuber situation, you have the audience uh, control the emotion on the character a little bit. These are additive blends. So they'll go on top of whatever the iPhone is doing. So that's kind of neat, kind of, kind of surprising. So yeah, those are the big features for the VR mocap update. Um, something else that I've done is I've gone through and I've added um, a blueprint interface so that when certain actions are performed, like if the camera changes or um, you enter a different, uh, say actor mode or calibrate mode, it'll send that message to whatever you subscribe to that event. So that's good for VTuber stuff. Um, oh yeah, I guess there's also, um, I'll just open up the screen here. I forgot about this one last little thing. I added a VTuber mode, which will basically go straight into the actor mode. <laughs> it has some, some weird issues. I think that, um, it's not loading the, the right, um, calibration profile, but eventually what that's going to do is make it so that you basically launch straight into the character if you've calibrated them once before. There's also iPhone mode. If I press play and I calibrate into the actor, you can see that it's actually using the iPhone to get some head rotation, which is also kind of multiplied down through the spine. Um, so basically you don't need any trackers to use this. You could just have like, you know, a torso up VTuber. Um, other uh, maintenance stuff, I did remove the, uh, the blueprint that was specific to Vive and I've added a new um, INI file that has the inputs for the Vive mapped onto the index ma action mappings that I did. So if you don't understand what that means, um, Google it, I don't know. 
<laughs> Basically, you can have um, different inputs and import them into the project so you don't have to manually set up the inputs. I'd recommend doing it at least once if you haven't set up your inputs manually before because I don't know, it's good to, good to know how to do it. Um, and I found that sometimes importing those INI files doesn't work. Um, the reason why I got rid of the other blueprint was some people found that it didn't work for them and uh, it was causing them issues. And also, I can't maintain multiple um, blueprints. So uh, yeah, as far as the future goes, I really want to figure out a way to use less trackers. So I'm trying to figure out a way of calculating like where the spine is going to be, like spine 03 is going to be without the tracker. Because right now I'm just having like, you know, a, a null object that's kind of goes straight from the pelvis up here and... Um, you know, it's very stiff, obviously, like you just move like like this. So I'm trying to figure out a way of like, oh, maybe it's like, you know, there's a, a point in between or like a bezier that I can draw between the head and the pal. I don't know. I had to figure that out because I'm finding that using this system during local multiplayer stuff, there's sometimes too much data. Like there's too many trackers floating around and it causes things to drop the signals. Like the bandwidth just gets to be too much. So if we have less trackers, then we have less to deal with. And, you know, also for networking, like say, if we could get this down to like um, five tracked points. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we can, but like, if we can get down to like fewer tracked points, that's less data to send over the network. Yeah, and again, replication, that's another thing I just don't know how to do. But anyways, I hope this was interesting and helpful. And um, yeah, if you have any other ideas for features, let me know. I'm, I'm mostly, again, just looking into like things that would be useful for my own production needs, making short films with the system and uh, seeing what is helpful. So yeah, I hope that was uh, interesting and I hope you have a great day. Take care, everyone. Yeah, take that, Walt. Yeah, yeah, yeah.